Now that we discussed infrared spectroscopy, let's take a look at the following example in which we're going to use the given infrared spectroscopy graph and the following table to determine which one of these four molecules actually corresponds or closely matches the given information. So let's begin by briefly recalling how infrared spectroscopy actually works. So basically we can use infrared spectroscopy to determine the different types of functional groups, the different types of bonds that our molecule contains. Now it uses the following principle. Every chemical bond oscillates with a specific frequency that corresponds to a certain amount of energy. Now the frequency of oscillation of any chemical bond is related to a quantity known as the wave number that is given in units, reciprocal centimeters, so centimeters to the negative one. Now, the greater the frequency of oscillation of our chemical bond is, the greater our wave number is. Now, when we take infrared electromagnetic waves and we direct those infrared electromagnetic waves at our chemical bonds, what happens is, if the frequency of that particular wave, if the energy of that wave matches the energy of oscillation of our chemical bond, then that chemical bond will absorb that energy. However, if the energies or frequencies do not match, then none of the energy will be absorbed by the chemical bond and our wave is said to be transmitted. So according to this graph, the x-axis is the wave number and the y-axis is the percent transmittance. So each one of these dips corresponds to a chemical bond that absorbed that energy. So basically we can use these dips to determine the different types of chemical bonds that our molecule has. Now the higher up we go along the y-axis, the less energy is absorbed by the chemical bond and the more is transmitted. The lower we go, the more is absorbed and the less is transmitted. Now if we go to the left along the way along the x-axis as the wave number increases going this way the frequency increases and the energy of that oscillating chemical bond increases so uh, the bonds located to the left are the stronger bonds the bonds located to the right are the weaker bonds so we have the following given table and this table basically gives us the specific wave number values for each one of these chemical bonds and we want to use that to determine which one of these molecules corresponds to this table. So let's begin by looking at these four molecules and describing the different types of chemical bonds that we have. So, let's begin with our OH bond. So notice that molecule 3 and molecule 4 have the OH bond, while molecule 1 and molecule 2 do not. However, molecule 1 and molecule 2 have the NH bond. So we have NH for these two molecules and OH for these two molecules. Now, the wave number for OH and NH is very, very close to one another. So we see that that OH has a wave number of 3300 and NH has this wave number and they're very close. So that means we cannot use these values to differentiate which one of these molecules corresponds to this graph. Because if we look on our graph and we look within this region which is about here, we see that this in fact corresponds to a wave number close to this value. So this P can either be OH or NH and that means any one of these molecules could have this particular dip. So let's move on to the next type of bond. So these two molecules have the CO double bond. We have the double bond here, double bond here, and these do not. So if we go to the following table and we see that the table does not actually have the dip for this particular bond, then that means it cannot be molecules one and molecule two. So the C double 
double O has a peak at 1700. Now if we go here, 1700 is about here and we see that there is no peak here and that means because there is no peak, it cannot be one and it cannot be two because these molecules have the C double O bond and this graph does not have that dip or peak. When I say peak, I really mean dip because we're going in reverse downward. So finally, we know that it's either three or four. Now, what is the main difference between these two types of molecules? Well, we can say that the main difference is this C and N that has a triple bond. This contains that chemical bond and this doesn't. Now, this particular chemical bond has a wave number that is given by this value, about 2240. Now, if we go to this graph and we find that there is a peak or there is a dip at this specific wave number, that means the molecule must be this and not this. So let's go at 2240. So 2240 is about here and we see that this is our peak or dip that corresponds to this particular chemical bond. And that implies that whatever our molecule is, it must have this bond and then it cannot be this molecule molecule because this molecule does not have this bond. So we see that this is our molecule that closely matches the following infrared spectroscopy graph.